uh, I think I want to introduce today is a vulgar result. And at least for the moment, I want to understand vulgarisms in a kind of simple way as a way to rewrite exponential equations. So I want to say that every statement about exponentials is a statement about logarithms and vice versa. Every statement about a logarithm is a statement about an exponential. In particular, I want to say that writing a to the power of B equals C is the same as writing that the logarithm base, maybe I want just because B stands for base most of the time. Maybe I want to rewrite that so that B is the base. It's the same as writing that the logarithm, then we put the letter B down here. We put the C up here. And this is equal to A. Yeah. This is red, if you were speaking out loud. The logarithm base B of C. And this potentially very cryptic uh, statement and hopefully be verified very briefly with an example. So say we have a statement about an exponential. We have the statement that two to the third power equals eight, just, uh, just a true statement. This is the same as the statement that the logarithm base two of eight equals three. Yeah. And we're really just thugging and saying here, the base of the exponential becomes the base of the logarithm. This three up here became that three down there. And this eight turned into that eight. We'll do more examples, but it might be helpful to reflect on the fact that what we're doing here is something we're really quite used to doing after a semester of college algebra. Like the statement that um, two cubed, now, Maybe that would be confusing. The statement that two to the X, heavens. let's try this one more time. The statement that X cubed equals eight. 
and the statement that x equals eight to the one third power. These statements are identical. They express the exact same pieces of information. And we're just learning to do the same thing, where instead of having your X down here, you have your X up here. Two cubed, let me declutter this. The statement that two cubed equals eight, and the statement that the logarithm base two of eight equals three are the same statement, just two different ways of writing the same thing. Similarly, if we wanted to look at another example, um, the statement that three has a negative one equals one third. Um, the fact that we have negative numbers and fractions floating around isn't changing this or making it any harder than it would otherwise be. We're just bugging and playing essentially. The base of the exponential becomes the base of the logarithm. So we're going to have the logarithm base three. The number on the right of the equal sign is going to come over to the left. This C comes over to the left here. And the number on the left of the equal sign, the power, the exponent, is going to move over to the right. So the statement that three to the negative one equals one third, and the statement that the log base three of one third equals negative one are the same statement. Just written differently. And similarly, if we have a statement about a logarithm, so for example, the statement that the log base two of 32 equals five, any statement about a logarithm is a statement about an exponent. And I've always found it sort of helpful to think in terms of this counterclockwise Low, this statement of, about logarithms rephrased to be about exponentials is the statement that two to the fifth power equals 32. Now, all of this sort of begs the question of why, though. I mean, we're probably, even if we've seen logarithms in high school, we're probably a lot more comfortable with exponents than we are with logarithms. So it raises sort of a very valid question. Why would we want? to do this? What's our overall goal here? And our overall goal is going to be to solve exponential equations. So to solve exponential expressions set equal to numbers. 
terms, like two to the X equals seven. And we'll really drill down into solving exponential equations tomorrow. But the basic idea is quick enough to explain. Two to the X equals seven. And the log base two of um, seven equals X are formally identical statements. They're giving you, formally speaking, the same pieces of information. But in the second statement, the X that we're trying to find is by itself on one side of the equality. And on the other side of the equality, we have the log base two of seven. And if we could go to our calculator and plug in log base two of seven, we would have solved that exponential equation. Now, whether you can go to your calculator and plug that in, I think depends on your calculator. In particular, I don't think a TI-83 has this sort of coded in to it. Uh, that's fine. We'll learn other ways to deal with this. But if, for example, you had a TI-84 plus CE, you could type math. You could go into the math menu. You could scroll down a ways until you got to log base. And you could then type in two arrow key, type in seven, press enter, and there's the log base two of seven. 2.807 followed by some other stuff. And so <laughs> we have been enabled to solve this exponential equation. If we want to solve two to the power of x, then rewriting this in terms of logarithms and then evaluating that logarithm on our calculator enables us to find x. So the practical difference between that and that, um, they might be formally equivalent, but you can't type two to the power of x equals seven into your calculator, whereas we could type the log base two of seven. So that's what logarithms are good for. Um, is everybody with me so far here? And let's introduce a few special logarithms. I've said that I don't think every TI calculator has that log base in the math menu. Um, but every calculator has some kind of logarithm body. 
in fact, two logarithm bodies. If you look right next to the seven on your calculator, you'll find log. And if you press the log button, you'll notice that there's no uh, face you can put the base here. So your calculator isn't asking you for a base. It's just asking you what you want to take the log of. And this is because if you just have the log of x and you don't have any base written down, this means the logarithm base n of x. This is fairly standard. If you go into something like computer science, um, you might see the log of x used to be in the log base or if you go into some kind of higher level math textbooks, you might see the log of X to mean the log base E. So I can't say it's 100%, but it is fairly standard. And this logarithm has a name. In fact, it's called the Amin logarithm. So, a fair number of you seem to be enrolled in various science courses right now. The common logarithm is what is most commonly used in science applications. Hence the word or the name common. So on your calculator, if you type the log of nine, this is the common logarithm of nine, the log base 10. And We can therefore solve exponential equations say 10 to the x equals 7 t. If we wanted to solve this, we'll learn alternative techniques tomorrow, but for today, we would realize, okay, this statement about exponentials is also a statement about logarithms. We would hopefully also remember that the log base 10 is the common log and that we have a button for it on our calculator. So no need to um, no need to go searching around the math menu. The common logarithm of 17 is this. And we can check our work. 10 to the power of 1.230445. Eight nine two one. Uh, you put in eleven. 
I did. Yes. Let me <coughs> pull that back up and get rid of one of those ones and making allowance for a little rounding error. This is indeed 17. It will turn out, we'll do this tomorrow, that we can always use the common log to solve exponential equations, even if we have a base other than 10. But that will be for tomorrow. Um, we should at least briefly, look at the other logarithm button on your calculator, LNX. If we go to our calculator, we can find it. It is hiding, uh, hiding under the common logarithm button. And LMX is the logarithm base E of X. So E is this Euler's constant 2.718 something. Uh, we're not going to, I think, make any extensive use of this in this class, because this is the logarithm that gets used in the calculus and spelling. It gets used in calculus and higher math and I think that most people in this room are probably not planning to take couch to this. Um, so using this extensively might not, there might not be a lot of point to it, but you should at least be able to look at LNX and recognize that, okay, that's some kind of logarithm. Let's end with the, well, no, I have a few things I want to say. We're not really interested, or at least I'm not really interested in, in viewing logarithms as functions. I'm interested in using logarithms as tools to solve exponential equations. But, I mean, you can write down, for example, f of x equals the log of x. And you can then ask, well, what properties does this have? And for our purposes, you should know that the domain of a logarithm is the numbers greater than zero. And just in general, you should know that the logarithm is slow growing. And you should have a general idea of the graph. So let's 
go to Desmos. Oh, well, getting a little ahead of myself. So here's the common logarithm, the log base E, um, the log base 10, sorry. All logarithms look basically like this. I mean, the log base E and the log base 10 both have a vertical asymptote here. They both sort of slowly grow when X increases. Uh, returning to my statement that the logarithm grows slowly. Let's adjust the viewing window. That's that X, X is currently going up to a hundred. So here X is getting unfathomably big, like seven times 10 to the 23rd. This is like the number of atoms in the universe, sort of a number. And you'll know that the logarithms are still sitting at about 24 and about 55. So the um, statement that the logarithm is slow growing has definitely been demonstrated. Pick another logarithm, the logarithm base two. Well, with these unfathomably big numbers, Y is at about 81. Um, I guess I should at least briefly touch on the fact that logarithms can look different if you have a number less than one in the base. Like here's the logarithm base 0.5. Um, in reality, though, the log base 10, the log base E, and the log base 2 are the only bases that get used frequently. So I don't see a lot of point in looking at, you know, the log base 0.1 if nobody's ever going to use that in any applications you're going to see. So for our purposes, logarithms look like this. So, Here's one property, we'll end on this. We'll use this property extensively tomorrow. Any logarithm gets rid of so that's a cryptic phrase. Let me give this to you as a mathematical statement. If we have a logarithm of an exponent, so the logarithm base B 
of a to the power of c, we can rewrite that as the exponent times the logarithm base b of the base. And again, because these things are always easier when you have concrete numbers to look at, or I think they are anyway, having the common logarithm of two cubed is the same as having three times the common logarithm of two. Let us verify that. The logarithm of, let me think it was two to the power of three, I think. So the logarithm of two to the power of three, get that parenthesis down here, is this. And I'm claiming that this is the same as three times the logarithm of two. And indeed, it is. So we'll really nail, drill down on this tomorrow. But this provides a way of using common logarithms to solve exponential equations, even when your base is not 10. Because say that you have this equation, two to the power of x equals three. We could solve this by rewriting it. But that assumes that you have a calculator that can evaluate the log base two of three, which you might not. A way to solve this using only the common logarithm button would be to take the common logarithm of both sides. On the left, that will take the x out of the exponent. On the right, you'll have the log of three. And don't let yourself be intimidated here. The log of two is a number. The log of three is also a number. So you just have x times a number equals another number. And if you want x, you undo multiplication by a division. So you see that only using the common logarithm we're able to solve this. The log of three divided by the log of two. This is another reason I said I'm not really interested in, you know, logarithm base one half or whatever, 
because you can just choose what base you want to work with. I mean, here, our base was two, but I said, okay, well, I'm going to work with base 10 instead, and I still was able to make that work. So if I had, low race job, but if I had one half to the power of x equals three, this doesn't mean that I have to use a logarithm base one half. I can still use the logarithm base and I'll get x equals the logarithm base 10 of one half. I'll get the logarithm base 10 of three. I'll divide. The common logarithm of three divided by the logarithm of one half. And I can solve the problem that way. So you really do just get to choose what logarithm you use. And that's why I can make statements like in science, people usually use the log base 10, whereas in math, people usually use the log base e. Or in computer science, people usually use the log base 2. Because you can just solve equations using whatever base you will want. As I say, well, You'll solve equations until you're sick of it tomorrow for today. Let me get you this. Let me also, of course, get you your tests back. Yeah. <laughs>
Do you want to put these on your desks? Uh, yeah. Uh, getting rid of the logarithm of the power is not necessarily getting rid of the base. Yeah. Right. And you keep the base. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, just. Yeah. Oh, because I thought too. Does it have the? Oh, yeah. I was like, wait, we don't have. Sorry. Yeah, the last time back. But I have it on it, okay? See you tomorrow. Yeah, so I went to my quiz and I did it, then I saw that right in that message. Yeah, right? Yeah. 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 Ye